I'm Eric Nasa with NewShooter.com, and I'm at CES 2019. I'm at the Nikon booth with... Steve Heiner. Steve, how you doing? I'm doing great. What is your position at Nikon? I'm a senior technical manager at Nikon in New York. I think I found the right guy, because something <laughs> kind of cool is going on with your cameras. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> this is a very exciting CES for us. It's been an exciting year. In the past, uh, you know, we introduced our whole new Z system uh, in August of uh, last year. And uh, we've introduced both cameras into the market now in a whole new lineup of lenses. And uh, this is the first time anybody's seen it really here in the CES audience to the wide market. So it's very exciting stuff. All right, we got a couple of things to sure. kind of line up. I'm going to talk to, to Jeremy as well. Yeah. Uh, the big one, obviously, is being able to get ProRes RAW out of HDMI with a Nikon camera yes. and, and an Atomos uh, Ninja 5. Now, you know, I remember when, when, when Jeremy looked at my camera and he said, we can do this. We have ProRes RAW. Somebody, you know, Nikon, the other guys, come on. Yeah. Let's do this. Yeah. Did you guys actually, you know, step up and want to do this? Well, it's interesting because, you know, I've known Jeremy for quite some time. I think when it was probably maybe the very first time we ever went to NAB. Now, people wouldn't normally associate Nikon with a show like NAB because, you know, here at Afora we've always made great still cameras and a great range of lenses. Uh, but of course, we were sort of, you know, we were introducing SLR cameras. And Everybody, especially your, your viewership and your readership, they definitely know what we're talking about, that there are a lot of compromises going into using a DSLR for shooting video. So, of course, I met up with Jeremy at an NAB in the very early days, I think, very first Ninja, uh, and uh, he made such an impression on me, but it was already apparent that he'd been talking to our parent company in Japan. Uh, as you know, Jeremy speaks fluent Japanese, so he had an association with our technicians or our engineers on the Tokyo side. Since he's from Australia, he had spent a lot of time in Japan, he lived there, got to know people in Japan, he speaks the language. He had approached directly to our engineering staff to try and make some sort of cooperation happen between our companies, and of course, uh, the, the rest is kind of history. But here we are in 2019, and we are so excited about ProRes RAW. So excited. And it's really great because, you know, I don't want to say you guys were late to the game, but boy, this this new mirrorless camera with the, the Z cameras and, you know, and, and what you're doing right now, you're really pushing the envelope. And yeah. is that really important for Nikon to do that at this stage with video yeah. in a mirrorless camera? It, absolutely, of course. We, we have been known to be kind of uh, uh, stodgy in the past, you know, our DSLRs. We, we, we weren't always the first to introduce things to the market. So a lot of things we were, a lot of lens technologies we were, uh, but we are have been a very traditionally a very conservative company. We haven't had a lot of experience, a lot of history like a lot of the companies in the, in the industry have had with video. So of course, uh, we had to catch up very quickly. There were some rough patches. There are still going to be rough patches, but we're trying the best we can. Now we've built a system in this new Z system, mirrorless system, that allows us to move much, much faster. We even introduced, you know, we've announced here at CES, just a few short months after introducing this camera, additional features that are going to be coming forward by way of firmware, uh, the CF Express, we've got IAF coming, and of course, ProRes RAW. So it's very important that we develop a standard that not only works for our base uh, customer, uh, the, the still photographer, but we're very interested in the video uh, aspect. And now with these cameras, I think we can truly compete. And of course, ProRes RAW coming to the Z system is a major breakthrough. And I think anybody who is familiar with still photography will recognize this is like as if we, rec as if we introduced our original Nikon electronic RAW file for the first time. Yeah. This is going to give videographers a level of control that they've never known before in this level of uh, video shooting. And what are the price ranges now of your of your two cameras, your two Z cameras? The Z6 is, is really our sort of preferred video camera. Uh, it's $2,000 for the body. Uh, this is a camera that has full pixel readout for both the full frame uh, mode, FX mode, and DX mode. So it's a pixel for pixel readout. It actually downsamples slightly. So uh, there's, uh, it, it, it is the premier camera. Now we have a Z7, which is also 45 megapixels. This one's only 24 megapixels. The 45 megapixel Z7 camera, of course, will only do 
uh, pixel for pixel in DX 4K mode, but this camera will do it in both FX and DX mode, so therefore we elevate this one slightly above that because the resolution on the sensor is just right for doing that. And, uh, and this is going to be the camera region. that the videographer is going to want. Yes. This is the model. Yes. This is the one. This is the one I would recommend. As a video shooter myself, this is the camera that video shooters can, should concern themselves with. If you want to take still photographs up to 45 megapixels, you can spend the additional $1,300 on a Z7 if you want, but think about that. You can get two Z6s for almost a little more than one, one Z7. So for video shooters, highly recommend the Z6. Definitely. We can do 10-bit out, N-Log, to an Atomos recorder, of course, and now with the ProRes uh, RAW, it's just uh, it's unlocking all kinds of potential. Yeah, I mean, it's already pretty loaded with 10-bit, and it's 422 as well? Yes. Uh, I mean, that's Definitely. just that's just awesome. Now, talk to me a little bit about, you know, we all love continuous autofocus for video. Yes. Uh, how is that coming along? Oh. Is it pretty pretty sharp, pretty yes. good? It, it, exceptionally good. We have an auto area mode with face detection, and now we're going to add to that IAF, but for face detection, the camera is so responsive. We've now also built in a uh, the ability to slow down and speed up the responsiveness of your focus reaction too. So very much like doing a, a rack focus, you can control how fast that rack happens between one subject and another. Uh, that right there uh, requires no hands-on. Uh, you know, if you have this on a gimbal where you're not controlling the focus on the camera, the camera does a remarkable job. I'd invite anybody to go and look at the Chris Hirschman video from the Z7 on the Nikon USA uh, website. That was done entirely in autofocus, the entire video. And uh, they were kind of blown away because they had full, uh, they were ready to, there was a focus puller there ready to do his job. And they decided uh, at the last minute that it wasn't necessary because the autofocus was working so well. I expect that kind of response uh, when people start to use this, especially small production crews, even one man crew uh, yeah. <laughs> like your setup <laughs> here today. Right you know, this is a really, really helpful thing. The autofocus will follow focus uh, a face anywhere you want to go, or it can be set to follow uh, inanimate objects whatever's closest to the frame. You can move it back and forth, however you like. It, yeah. And of course, the touch screen on the camera when you're using it, you can simply touch on a different uh, uh, subject and it will s slowly focus there if you've set it to slow <laughs> focus or quickly focus there. That's really fantastic. All right, let, let me, let's me let rewind a little bit. Let's go back to a little bit of that, that ProRes raw out of the camera. Is there, well, first off, I mean, did you, did you even think this was possible or was this just kind of like, all right, let's just shoot for the stars? Well, you know, I, I heard about ProRes RAW. It's been out for, what, over a year now, yeah, so I mean, almost a year. Uh, so I knew that it was it, it existed. Uh, and and, I, and if there was anybody that I felt who could pull this off, it was Jeremy. Yeah. Uh, and I really have to give him credit for being there in Japan as often as he is talking directly to our engineers. I'm sure he's talking to others, but there's a certain connection there that we've had since he made his very first unit, which was develop based on our ability to output from the HDMI. I think he, more than anybody, encouraged our factory to do that. Uh, so we have to sort of taken what we've heard from the market, we pass that back to the factory, and Jeremy's done the same thing by interfacing directly with our engineers. So the, the cooperation between the two companies couldn't be closer. And is there any limitation to what the camera can do when you're recording in ProRes RAW? I mean, like, does it, there the touch screen still work or oh, yeah. no blackout, Every, nothing like that? Everything will work, no blackouts. The only restriction is that you can't simultaneously record uh, even 8-bit to the uh, in-camera card. That's the only uh, restriction. So it's ex, ex, external out only? Yes, exactly, when you choose that option. Now, you can actually use external recorder at 1080 and record out to the recorder uh, at, at full 8-bit uh, 422 uh, and record to the uh, card in the camera uh, using uh, either uh, uh, MP4 or MOV. Fantastic. You guys have a new lens too, I believe? We do. We just introduced this brand new uh, 14 to 30 millimeter ultra wide angle lens, uh, which I think uh, filmmakers will be especially excited about the fact that, you know, our 14 to 24 for our DSLRs has a huge bulbous front element on it. It's a 2.8. This is an F4, so it's one stop slower, but look at the size of it. Yeah, it's it's considerably smaller and you can put a filter on it like a neutral density. This is important to us filmmakers, uh, but for still photographers, you can put polarizer on there, and of course it's very small and it's very compact, but has the same sort of wide angle impact that our 14 millimeter does. The camera itself is nice and compact. I yes. mean, this is a full frame camera, right? Yeah, it, I mean, it it's, and you it's know, compact. You know, ever since we took the mirror out, 
we, we made our mount bigger and we reduced that flange back distance so the uh, back of the lens is so close to the sensor we can do all kinds of radical lens designs uh, based upon those mount dimensions. So we're very excited to see a whole bevy of lenses coming. Yeah, everything's changing now. I mean, yeah. this is really kind of like the new time for the, for the, I guess, DSLR. This is this is a new thing. It's everything, this is. The, the lens is becoming, it used to be that save your lenses forever because, you know, you can use them on all these bodies. But, you know, now we're really moving into a whole new a whole new deal. It's pretty it exciting. Is. And and this is exciting because of what it will bring in the future. But you know what the best part is? Nikon doesn't forget the legacy customer. This camera will not only, using an FTZ, an F mount, or a Z mount to F mount adapter, will allow you to use all of our 90 plus existing AFS lenses in our current lineup, which are all the latest uh, F mount lenses, but that will allow you to actually accept up to 360 nice. different types of Nikkors made over the decades uh, that sometimes, in some cases, obviously never had vibration reduction, but because that's now a part of the camera body, you get to take advantage of that. So your old lenses have all new life. Nice. Yeah, and so, really and exciting. I know, and I know <laughs> that your viewers and your readers absolutely love their vintage Nikkor lenses. Yeah. I've seen it all over the place. So now those lenses can benefit from the fact that we will have in-camera uh, image stabilization that they can take advantage of. So that's huge. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, sir, anything else you'd like to add that I haven't touched on about ProRes Ra and this cool new camera? Well, I think we hit on all <laughs> the great spots, but just spread the word, because <laughs> this is a big day for video shooters. The Z6, the Atomos Ninja 5, ProRes Ra, it's like, wow, big deal. You know, still photographers might go, eh, we've had Ra for a long time. Right. Video shooters, this is a huge day. Yeah, and that's, a, that's actually a, a very relevant fact, I mean, because you know, we, I shoot raw all the time with my my still cameras. Yeah. I, I, it just it offers that flexibility. Yes. And and now, yeah, I guess in 2019, I guess we're all going to be shooting more raw. It's not just for red cameras and airy cameras anymore. Yeah, no more, no more. <laughs> we're in the game. All right, sir. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Exciting stuff. Thank you.